Good afternoon. I'm, I'm Mike Brown, and this is my land speed race car, uh, garage built. Uh, I designed it uh, and did the engineering, uh, built it, and uh, I drive it. Uh, top speed on the car has been 221.44 and a mile and a half. Uh, best mile was 210.133. And we hold, or current record holders, in the BBFL class in Loring, Maine, Blytheville, Arkansas, and Beeville, Texas. The uh, body for this uh, is a uh, fiberglass replica of a P38 tank. Um, last original aluminum P38 tank I seen went for $15,000 and it's a piece of history and belongs in a museum not cut up for a race car in my opinion. So uh, this fiberglass body does have some provenance. If you look down here you'll see some ridges and uh, those ridges are in the mold from the original tank that seen service in World War II that this mold was made to create these body panels. Every place there's a ridge uh, was a baffle to keep the fuel from sloshing. A lot of people sand them out. I thought, oh, that's fine with me. We'll just leave it that way. This car is built to uh, SCTA uh, safety specifications. Uh, could pass tech at Bonneville or El Mirage or any land speed event. Uh, it's currently powered by a modern LSA engine, which is a 2009 to 2014 Cadillac CTS-V or Camaro ZL1 motor. It's supercharged, 6.2 liters. Uh, in this application, um, it's just got a few modifications. Uh, running original factory computer, it's got a 2-inch supercharger pulley to get a little more boost. It's got bigger fuel injectors because we do run race fuel in this. $25 a gallon and runs, takes about a gallon per mile to run this car. 630 horsepower uh, at the wheels and I have a 75 shot of nitrous. Uh, we get about 70 horsepower to rear wheels from the nitrous. We'll only spray the nitrous uh, in high gear uh, at a mile event. That's a, uh, about the half mile mark at 170 miles an hour after I shift into high gear. Um, and then it's about 14 seconds to the end of the track from, from there. Uh, this is a parachute tube down here on the end of this round tube. Uh, anything in land speed world that goes over 175 miles an hour has to have a parachute to slow down with. On our 221 run, top speed run, I ruined all four tires. They were drag radials. Uh, tires are a big concern in, in land speed. Uh, so now I'm running these Hoosier uh, tires, they're spec racing circuit tires for NASCAR, uh, and they'll give me 250 on those. Uh, of note, the moon discs, the hubcaps that are on there, when you license for 200, those hubcaps have to be attached with quarter turn Zeus fasteners, no screws, no friction fit. The uh, front tires are Michelin Pilot Sport 2s, uh, it's a Porsche N1 series tire and uh, they're Y and Perrin rated uh, for I believe 179 miles an hour at rated load. It's an extra heavy sidewall tire. Now, the cockpit requires a uh, full containment seat. There's no padding in the seat because I have to wear an SFI 20 fire suit. There's four layers of Nomex, so that's all the padding I need. It's a 40 second run to 200 miles an hour anyway. Uh, I have to have uh, certified seat belts. They're uh, seven points of restraint two shoulder straps, two waist strap, a sub belt, and then my fire suit has wrist restraints sewn into it. So that gives me a total of seven. Um, so uh, you don't want anything that'll burn in there. There's two aqueous fire suppression systems, water and foam, one for the cockpit, one for the engine. The important thing in mile racing is to see the finish line. You, you don't want to run past the finish line. And it's really easy to do at that speed. Uh, the finish line goes by really quick. So um, seeing other people's um, bad experiences, I've taken all the gauges out of the car. I use a shift light, just a simple shift light that turns yellow when it's time to shift, which is about 5,820 RPM. And uh, that way you can keep your eyes out on the track watching for that finish line. And then there's a data logger on the back of the car and it gets all the data so I can plug a computer in after a run and look at the data after the run uh, and not be distracted by a gauge. It's a four-speed car, manual shift. Uh, take off in first, it's a 3.28 to one first gear uh, and a 248 to one final drive ratio. So first gear is really tall. A lot of 200 mile an hour cars need a push start to 25. 
Uh, this car will take off on its own. So we take off in first gear and ease into it. With so much horsepower and 2,800 pounds, uh, it's a handful. You have to drive the car. You're pedaling a little bit in first and second gear. Third gear, the car settles down a little bit. Uh, shift into fourth gear at about 170 miles an hour to half mile mark. Uh, and then uh, the car is very settled. 200 miles an hour and a half mile is a lot harder to do than I ever imagined or, or most people would imagine. We started out at 183 and a few modifications to get to 192, 201, and at that track we're currently at 210. Uh, 221 is our top speed in a mile and a half, and really I think the goal for me is, is 220 in a mile, and, and we'll see uh, if we can get there.